This section is going to be about exceptions. And let's take a look at this here. So we're going to say new console app Q5 design patterns. This is 3.1. And I'm just going to paste this in here. So exception safety, and you can look that up on like Wikipedia here. Basically, there's four types. There's no safety, basic, strong, and a no throw guarantee. And we're going to go over each one of these. This video focuses on no safety. This is where really bad things happen. This is um. This is where only the brave dare to fly. Let's put it that way. So this is where our program is probably going to crash. We're going to create all sorts of issues, and we really just don't care. We're just hacking out some code, trying to get it done as fast as possible. So we're going to say git int, and we're just going to make a couple little functions here. And we're going to say perfect code that never fails. I'm going to try and give you an example of what we're talking about as far as something that we would expect would never ever fail on us. So we can create a bool. We're going to create an int called value equals and we're going to say let's actually say qString data. So we're going to say data to int. Now this is a little bit dangerous here because it could just you know massively fail what if it's like hello world instead of an actual number so we're gonna say give it a reference to that bool now we need to see if it failed otherwise we're going to return the value now I say perfect code that never fails, but yes, things bad things could happen because we're depending upon other people, aka the cute developers, to not fail in this conversion function here. But the rest of this looks pretty, pretty safe. Now, this is not necessarily a no throw guarantee, although it's very close to it. We're going to live in the real world and we're going to show an example of really what not to do, but you're going to see tons of it out there. So I say, boy, user IO. And let's go ahead and I want to say Q text stream. And I should probably, you know, put some includes in here. Probably be super helpful at this point. And then let's go ahead and go include. Why not? Let's use a Q list. And don't really need it, but just because I'm paranoid. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our Q text stream. And this is going to be a pointer to a stream. Instantly working with a pointer, we kind of go, oh no, bad things are going to happen. Nobody loves pointers. And we're going to work with a pointer to a list. So instantly, right off the bat, what's one thing that could go horribly wrong? That's right, there could be null values, or these pointers could be dangling pointers, and they're not set, which is very, very dangerous. So what we're going to do is just completely ignore that, because why not? Now let's actually let's make this a little more complex than I wanted to. Enter a number and a name, and then just like an example here. So now we're going to do some sort of data parsing. We're going to say qString value equal read line. Now you notice how we're already using this Q text stream, but we haven't even determined if it exists. So this is super, super dangerous. So danger, danger, bad things could happen right there. And then Q string list items equal value. And we want to just split that. Notice how we're using Q string list. 
but we don't have it in our includes. So that's another thing that could go horribly wrong. We're just assuming is included. Now, this will probably spark a whole controversy in the Q&A where people are going to say, well, it is included because of the way Qt does this, 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 and that, and it's part of Qt Core and blah, blah, blah. What if Qt changes? I've run into that myself where I thought something was included. I switched versions of Qt, and suddenly, magically, it's not included anymore. Uh, that was a long time ago, but it did happen. So, And we're going to say items at... Let's go ahead and grab zero. And we're just going to say two int, and we're just going to assume this works. And I'm just putting my thoughts in the comments right after, you know, what each line, what could possibly go wrong here. Some of these things, there's just way too much to name, but. And we're going to do not append, at, there we go. We're assuming this exists. It may not exist. There may not be an item at one. So what if they only entered one thing, you know, and they didn't hit space. They just hit like the letter A. So then we've got two problems. It's not a number and there's no second value here. Then we're just going to say list dot insert and we want the ID and the name. We're assuming we even made it that far. And then we're just going to come back and uh, again, list may not even exist because we're using a pointer. So another bad thing could happen there. Q info. You entered. And then we were probably going to have, and I'm just going to, rather than type all that out, just paste in from my notes here. What's going on here? Well, what if we entered a number? So we've gotten all the way down to this point, but we're now saying list at whatever that number. What if we put in 257, but there's only one item in the list? Well, we're going to get an assert failure, the index out of range error. So that will be spectacular. And then we're going to just say user IO and then stream list. So we're just going to call this function over and over again until we die. So many horrible things in this little function that could just go completely wrong. And it says all pass this function will call itself. So now we're getting this systemic issue here saying, uh-oh, you are doing this incorrect, sir, and you may die. So even the compiler at this point is going, hey, buddy, are you sure you want to do this? Qtext stream. And we're going to just read that. This is a memory leak and potential crash. Bad things are going to happen there. And let's go ahead and make our queue list. And let's call this a string. We could have said queue string list. Now we're just going to call this user IO. And we're going to say stream and list. And of course, last thing on our notes here, no matching function call. Uh, what are we doing wrong here? Oh, that's why. Reference to. There we go. So we have something on the stack, something on the heap. We're mixing and matching them, which normally isn't an issue, but we're just assuming they both exist. Um, we're saying enter a number and a name. We're just going to read that entire line that could block forever. And I, this may not even exist. 
Q string list, item split, not a big deal there, but we're just assuming we got a value in the first place. And then we are saying, okay, convert to an int. We're just assuming that even worked. And then we're even assuming that there's even a second item here. And then on and on, I mean, just a whole bunch of disasters that could just completely destroy us here. But save run, does it work? Oh, oh, it did not. You're saying, ah, I know what the problem is. It's that index out of range. So let's say I came in and said zero, Brian. Now it magically works. One, Tammy. Magically works. Two, dog. Magically works. Three, cat. But what if I do 54? Hmm, Bob dies. So this is an intrinsic problem we have when writing code is that we just assume things will magically be there to work for us. And then we are shocked to find out something bad happened. So when we talk about no safety, that's really what we're talking about here is there is no promises, guarantees, or warranties of any kind that this will not completely just obliterate our program.